Hi, this is 10 Frames with Greg from French part of Sweden. Today we're going to take a look at Cartier and Alpina frames. These are two brands that are not uh, originally known for vintage eyewear. Cartier is a jeweler that got into eyewear very early on producing custom frames for French royalty. Alpina nowadays is well known for sports helmets or sports eyewear for uh, people on bicycles or snowboards or whatnot, but they did really, really amazing work in the 1980s. And so did Cartier. The first frame we're gonna look at is the Cartier Vitesse that you might have um, seen before. It's an acetate frame, a polished acetate, absolutely beautiful. Manufactured in 1991, I love it when the date of manufacture is actually written on the frame, like on this Vitesse. This is a small one, size 58, 15. And this is a large black frame, size 60, 15. It's absolutely stunning. The shape is a crown panto shape. And um, yeah, it's really one of the masterpieces from Cartier from the same year, 1991, comes the Diabolo, you might have seen it on Lady Gaga or Flowrider or whoever, which is an oval frame that combines black acetate with 18K gold details. Um, the craftsmanship is absolutely stunning. Um, it doesn't matter which angle you, you look at it, it's absolutely incredible. The gold, gold goes back and is screwed on the back of the frame. If you want to take out the lenses, you better be a pro because there's like several 15 steps until you can uh, remove the lenses. I customized this Cartier Diablo with gold mirror lenses. I think it fits the 18K gold perfectly. This frame is also dated 1991. Cartier only mentioned the year of production on the first year. I don't know how long the run was for the Vitesse and the Diablo, but um, on other frames like the Cartier Vendôme, which is also very well known, it was worn by Michael Douglas in Wall Street and by many others. The first year of production was 1983, and um, this is for the Louis Cartier Decor. This one is a titanium, brushed titanium model, very rare, absolutely beautiful. Gigantic, I think the size is 62, 14, well, yeah, it's pretty big. And it exists in uh, the different decors. So Louis Cartier is uh, the three lines, and then you have the famous screw decor which is called uh, Santos and yes, absolutely stunning frames. This is not from the first year, so it doesn't have a date on it. Um, what's really nice about Cartier frames is also their rosewood collection. This is the Cartier Bagatelle rosewood. It's 18k gold combined with very, very heavy wood. This wood is so dense that it doesn't swim in water. So it's wood that actually sinks. Don't go swimming with them. Um, and the year of production is 1990. An absolutely stunning frame. Very wearable as well. When you talk about acetate Cartier from 1991, there's a lot of people that pretend or that assume that the frames made by Jean-Claude Kili well, they say they were produced by Cartier as well. I don't think that they were actually produced by Cartier. This wouldn't make sense, a jewel making sports optics. But they could have been made in the same manufacturer. It says carbon fiber on it. It's probably from the beginning of the 90s as well. And they have a lot of nice details, the Jean-Claude Kili's, which I'm not saying they're Cartier frames, not at all. I'm just saying the production mode and the craftsmanship is very similar. They have extendable temples and the lovely detail, I love vintage eyewear from the 80s because there were so many gadgets that no one needed and that didn't make it into mass production. 
this has actually a suspension in the nose bridge. So when you go skiing and you have all these vibrations, you have a suspended nose bridge. You can also twist the earpieces for a stronger hold. Jean Trocchi model 469. A nice tool. And so why do I combine Cartier with Alpina? Some of you might know. Um, because amongst coll collectors, there's always the question, who started with the screws? Was it Cartier with the Santos decor? Or was it Alpina with the M1? The Alpina M1 is one of my all-time favorite frames, and it's probably one of the most popular frames I've ever made. Um, you might know it from Stevie Wonder, from Snoop Dogg, or whoever. And it's absolutely stunning. It was made out of aluminum with a 24K gold plate fixed with screws. This is the large model, size 6414. This colorway is lilac and gold. You have the silver and gold. This one is actually a medium-sized frame. You can recognize it by the fact that the Alpina logo is in the inside of the, of the lens and not in on the outside. It's always nice to have uh, original packaging. So Alpina, um, you know, made really nice boxes. Back in the day, you had to have all the gimmicks. You have your fold-out poster with the guarantee card and the flip-open case. Really nice detail. This is a gray and silver version. A lot of people say that this is a hybrid that wasn't released in the 1980s, but made its way to the stores later. The front plate says made in West Germany. However, experts differ in the year of production. Who knows? Um, Alpina's M1 line also produced other very interesting variations like the Alpina M14, which has a slightly different shape and is absolutely beautiful. A gold front 24K gold plate fixed with screws and black temples. Then you also have your small M1. It probably was meant as a feminine version of the large M1. Um, nonetheless, it's also beautiful. And the very rare um, Alpina M1 8, who is said to be a limited edition that was produced exclusively for uh, Alpina resellers back in the 1980s. Uh, this one is size 6514, so it's even larger than the regular M1. Um, if we're talking about frames with screws, we have to talk about Cartier, we have to talk about Alpina, but we also have to talk about Reinhold Messner. This is a folding Reinhold Messner frame from the famous Alpinist. And the manufacturing is very similar to Alpinist, so I don't know if it was made in the same factory but um, it's got a lot of similarities not only the screws but on the back of the frame how the temples are fixed and finally um, we're in Germany so I want to talk about the Willy Bogner frames as well as worn by Roger Moore in James Bond it's an absolutely beautiful frame that also features gimmicks that never made it into you know, general production. It has an adjustable nose bridge, meaning that if you have a large distance between your eyes, just like as I do, you can open the screws right here and enlarge the nose bridge. You can also adjust the temple length. So it's an absolutely stunning frame in black and white by Willy Bogner. Not made by Alpina, it's made by Eschenbach, also in West Germany. So that was it. Thanks for watching 10 Frames with Greg from French Party Sweden.